All right, we're going to have the kids come down today. Look what I got here. What do you think is in there? Money? What? Fake money. You know, when I was growing up, it has nothing to do with this. When I was growing up, you know what my favorite fake money was? They were little silver things that had chocolate in them. <laughs> do you remember those folks? Yeah. Hey, what's Thursday? Thanksgiving. Uh, who knows the story of Thanksgiving? Did you study it in school yet? A little bit? No? Well, let me tell you. I've got it written down here. We'll just go through it really briefly. But the first Thanksgiving was celebrated in November of 1621. That's a long time ago. That's even older than Mrs. Pierce. Yeah. Or Mr. Pierce, yes. <laughs> this ship called the Mayflower left England in 1620 and sailed across the Atlantic Ocean. Now, what's so important about that is that they thought that the world was flat. And so many of these sailors, they were afraid to get out of sight of land. So can you imagine having that fear and then sailing clear across 2,500 miles into the new world? Well, when they got here, there were 102 of them on this boat. 30 of them were, 30 additional were sailors. And that first year, it says 53 passengers lived out of 102. So half of them died. Well, they met an Indian by the name of Squanto. And Squanto had been that first year, see, the boat went back and forth once, and that first year he was taken as a slave back to Spain, but he learned English. So when he came back in, in, in 1621, he taught these guests of the Indians how to farm and how to do all this kind of stuff. So they celebrated their first Thanksgiving because so many of them were sick and died. They were just thankful to be alive. What do you think they ate that first Thanksgiving? I bet they did have turkey. I bet they did. But I don't think that was their main dish. See, they were up in Massachusetts by Cape Cod. You know what's up there? Clams and, and, and fish and, and s probably ate a lot of fish, don't you think? Probably some, uh, some uh, yams. You know what a yam is? What's a yam? <laughs> a yam is like a sweet potato. Do you like sweet potatoes? And I bet they had some carrots because they grow wild. But they were very thankful to be alive. What's that? What are you thankful for? Your mom? Your family? Your house? Your friends? What else? Your, this church? Yeah, I'm thankful for this church. What else are you thankful for? God. God. Me too. I'm thankful that his son came down and died for us, huh? He did. He did. So why don't we pray, and then I've got a gift for each one of you, okay? Father, thank you for this time when we can gather. And God, I thank you for these boys and girls. I thank you for their, their willingness to want to learn about you. And God, this Thanksgiving Day, help us to be very thankful for what we have. Not only our house and our families but for your son, Jesus. 
Now as they go off to Children's Church, I just pray that you would just allow them to learn something. For God, we want to give you the glory because we love you and praise you in the name of Jesus. I have a coin here for each one of you to take home. It's of the Ten Commandments. Okay? So come on by and let me, let me, uh, I'm just going to sit here. And you're going to come by and I'm going to give each one of you one. Okay? That's for you. Come on by. Whoop. And then you're dismissed. Okay? There you go. Whoop. There you go. There you go, sweetie. Young. So what are you thankful for this week, this year? Our freedom. Our freedom. You know, that's something we take for granted, isn't it? Our freedom. Our world's a mess, but we still have a God that loves us. And I'm very thankful for that. You know, when I think about Thanksgiving, I many times remember growing up in Detroit with my grandmother and my parents. And it was very important going over to her house. Well, she only lived four blocks away. So we would walk over and we'd have Thanksgiving dinner after we watched the Hudson's Parade on, on television. Some of you watched the Macy's Parade. I think that's still going. But the Hudson's was a local store in Detroit. And I was very thankful for family growing up. We get together in a small house, probably 900 square foot. And I don't know how we, we put 20, 25 people in there, but, but we would do that. And it was just a blessed time of being with family. And there was the turkey on the table and all the dressings, you know. Some people, however, I think they forget to remember what the word thanksgiving means. And it's so very simple, just giving thanks. Giving thanks. A businessman had done quite well for himself and he was out walking one day with a friend and he came across an old friend of his who had become a hobo. And the hobo came up to him and said, uh, can you help me out? And the guy handed him a $10 bill. $10? Is that all you're going to give me? Last time you gave me $50. Well, the guy said, you know, since I saw you last, I, I've gotten married. We've had a couple of kids. I, I bought a house. He says, so you're raising your family on my money. We sometimes grumble, don't we? We sometimes grumble. Our text today is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning with verse 12. And the title of my message is, What to Do This Thanksgiving? Let me read. Beginning with verse number 12. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of of your contributions for them and for all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you, thanks be to God for His inexpressible gift. Would you pray with me? Father, we come to this Thanksgiving season. Thanking you for all that you do. God, I sit back and yesterday I tried to, tried to sit down and write the blessings out that, that you've given Ruth and I over this past year. 
And I filled a couple sheets of paper. And I know I left something out. But the most important thing is our salvation. God, thank you for that. Now, Father, as we talk about this passage this morning, help us to remember to be thankful. To express our thanks back to you. Because you are the giver of all things. And we love you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we examine this passage this morning, I want to focus primarily on verse number 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15 says this, Thanks be to God for His inexpressible gift. I think within this verse there are three ways that we can celebrate thanksgiving. First, we need to learn the need for gratitude. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 7 tells us, Having been firmly rooted and now built it up in Him, and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. And Colossians 3.15 says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. The word thanks in our text shows us the gratitude that we should have, that should overflow, should, should just come out of our pores towards our Lord. In our society today, it seems that we've forgotten to say thank you. I was in the store the other day and a little boy wanted a candy bar. And his mom wouldn't give it to him until he said, please, may I have a candy bar? And then she had to say, well, what do you say? Well, thank you, mom. You see, when I was growing up, that was just instilled in us. Our parents taught us how to do that. But today, I think, all these things that happen in our lives, we just take for granted many times. All the things that God gives us, we just take for granted. Children need to be taught to say thank you. A mother and her two little boys were shopping in a grocery store, and the man did hand them a candy bar. And Johnny, what do you say to the man? Charge it. Well, where do you think you heard that from? Charge it. They learn from us. We need to learn to say thank you. Even to each other as adults. I'm very thankful for each one of you here. I think I've learned something from, from the majority of you that I've had contact with. Some of you I haven't had contact with. But during the last five, six months I've been here, I've learned a lot from you. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for helping me fit in, feeling welcome. All of us need to cultivate an attitude of thanksgiving or gratitude in our lives. And I think first it should start with our speech. Listen to what Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 5. And there must be no filthiness or sultry talk or cursed jesting which, you are not, which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks. It also should be characterized by our prayers. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 it says, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then again in Colossians chapter, or in Thessalonians uh, chapter 5 and verse 18, it says, In everything give thanks. Boy, pastor, that's hard to do. You don't know what's going on in my life. 
I'm probably at the lowest of the low, and you want me to give thanks for everything? Yeah, I do. Not only I do, God does. God does. In everything give thanks, for this is God's will, it says, for you in Christ Jesus. If we don't have time to be thankful here on earth, how do you expect us to, to be thankful up in heaven? You know, I've shared with you, I think the first thousand years, I'd love to sit down and talk to Paul. It's not going to happen. I think the first million years, I'm going to be kneeling at the Lord's feet, bowing down, praising Him for being there. Just thanking Him for, for allowing this poor sinner to come into His presence. So very, very important going to skip over this. Then we need to recognize that God is the giver of everything. Paul tells us in our text this morning that our thanks should be directed to God. Yes, we can be thankful for each other, but what's the purpose of that? The purpose is God, isn't it? One morning at breakfast, the father was a saying grace, as he usually did. But after he said grace, he started grumbling at his wife for the lousy breakfast she made. These eggs are watery. This bacon is limp. My toast is burnt. And finally, his daughter spoke up, a little seven-year-old. She said, Dad, do you think God heard you say the blessing this morning? Well, of course he did. Of course he did. Well, do you think he heard you complain? Well, yes. Well, which do you think he believed? Think about it. Sometimes we express gratitude and we say thank you to God with our lips but in our hearts we're complaining sometimes we people don't know how to thank God we're speechless sometimes but the Bible teaches us how to say thank you with our heart so I don't care what you're going through this morning it may be the worst day in your life God loves you. God loves you. And Bill Bright, as he used to say, he's got a plan for you. And I believe that with all my heart. Psalm chapter 9, verse 1 says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my heart. I will also tell of thy wonders, all thy wonders. Psalm 86, 12, I give thanks to thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and will glorify thy name forever. But you know another way you can, can praise God? You can praise Him by, whoops, where am I at? Be patient with me. Anyhow, you can praise Him with singing. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, with all wisdom teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your heart to God. <coughs> we need to give thanks with our lips, don't we? We need to praise Him with our heart. We need to thank Him with our entire being. We need to thank Him with our lips. And Psalm 109.30 says, With thy mouth I shall give thanks abundantly to God. And in the midst of many, I will praise Him. And then in Hebrews, Through Him then, let us continually. What does that word mean? Continually. It means Continually. Offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. 
They give thanks to his name. And then lastly, or not lastly, but we need to remember the gifts that you have. I think every one of us could sit down like I did yesterday and fill out a piece of paper. And this might be a good thing for you to do this afternoon or maybe Thanksgiving morning. Sit down with your family with a piece of paper or your iPad or whatever and just write out what you're thankful to God for and see where that goes. Because I think many days we take our days for granted. We forget to say thank you, God, for another day. There was a man who used to transport mentally challenged people to a sanitarium. They don't have sanitariums anymore. I personally think they should bring them back. But he used to transport people to sanitariums and he would drop them off and they'd go in and live their life. And one day he dropped off this group and he noticed up on the top of the building, at the top floor, a window opening up and a man yelled out to him and said, Hey, you! And the driver said, You speaking to me? Yes, yes. He said, I want to ask you a question. He said, Have you ever thanked God For your healthy mind. Think about it. Much of what we're going through together as as a husband and wife. I thank God every day. But you know what? Until this never ever came up, I never did. I just took it for granted. The man suddenly realized he'd been driving for this hospital for 15 years. And he'd never thank God for a healthy mind. Folks, the Bible is full of reasons why we need to give thanks. First of all, because He is your Lord. He is your God. Psalm 107 verse 8 says, Let them give thanks to the Lord for His loving kindness and for His wonders to the sons of men. We need to give thanks for answered prayer, for His loving kindness. Let us give thanks for His loving kindness. For answered prayer, I shall give thanks to Thee, for Thou hast answered me, and Thou hast become my salvation. Fourth, He made you. He made you. I saw a thing on Facebook the other day of 12 weeks worth of babies. The first 12 weeks or 16 weeks, I'm not sure what it was, but showing the development of each week as they're growing in the womb. Can you imagine That's God. God. Drives me nuts with these abortion people. Because that's killing babies. God created you, Susan, just the way you are. Isn't that neat? Tom, he even created Tom as giant as he is. I would have cut a couple feet off of myself if I were God. You better be thankful I'm not God, boy. (laughs) But He made us. We need to thank you. Thank Him for His comfort. For His comfort. For His insight. How about this one? For good health. Do you ever sit down and You know, you might be going through cancer, you might be going through whatever, but you're still alive, aren't you? And you know what's going to happen when you die? (laughs) You're going to get a new body. How cool is that? 
you win either way. For his good health. And then for the victories in your life. Sit down and name the victories in your life that happen. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And here's one I like for each other. For each other. I'm very thankful for you. And lastly, for all things. That kind of encompasses everything. Ephesians 20, 5 verse 20 says, Always give thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. He gave us an inexpressible gift. What was that? Jesus. Jesus. He allowed him to die on the Calvary's cross for you and for me. That blows my mind. The gift of salvation is something we can't work for. We can't go to church for. I don't care how rich you are, you can't give enough money to get salvation. It's just as simple as accepting him into your heart. Saying, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come. Forgive my sins. Come and be my Savior. So I'm going to close this morning. Short sermon. Short because we have a business meeting and because we have the potluck afterwards and I'm trying to be a respecter of time. But let me ask you this question in closing. What are you thankful for this morning? What is it? What are you thankful for this morning? Go home. Make a list. Put that list in your Bible. And every day when you open your Bible, I hope it's every day, I'm assuming it's every day. You'll see that list and go down and thank God for these things. And then I'm sure that he's going to have you add more to it as they come to your mind. I'm thankful for you, for this church, for my wife. I'm thankful for, most of all, for my salvation that came through Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? And Father, that's very simple. What are we thankful for? <laughs> Let me count the ways. And I know I'll forget some. But help me to remember as the day goes by, as the, the week goes by, as I start writing and thinking about things that you've done and how you've blessed us. And let me say two simple words. I'm thankful. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for sending your son to die for me. Just me. Thank you for having him forgive my sins. God, we love you. We praise you. In the name of Jesus. Amen.